back. Right now we're going to talk about the first and second laws of thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is a pretty in-depth topic, but we can break it down simply today um, with a few pretty concrete examples. Two questions I want you to think about while listening today. First, uh, at the end of this video you should be able to define and, and give examples of the first and second laws of thermodynamics. And second, how are thermodynamics linked to environmental systems and environmental topics? So let's first look at the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics simply states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. And another major idea is that energy can only be converted from one form to another. So it can't be created or destroyed, it can only be converted. So what does that mean? Well, from an environmental standpoint, um, a lot of our energy on Earth starts from the sun. And when the sun is shining, uh, the radiation from the sun is where a majority of the energy on Earth comes from. If we take a look at that, and if the sun shines, let's say, on a certain area, let's say right here we have one square meter of earth, one square meter of grass. Well, the amount of sun that shines down on that square meter is approximately 1,000 watts per second, or what we would call one kilojoule. Okay, so one kilojoule or approximately 1,000 watts each second is shining on each square meter of the earth. Now, if we look at this, let's um, break down this unit of energy just a little bit here. So this unit of energy we often talk about is the joule, which is a capital J is the unit. And a joule is a little complicated, but we can look at it in a couple of different ways. Um, a joule usually is equal to the work done of moving one meter, uh, one newton over the course of one meter, or you, a lot of times it's also equal to the energy required to create one watt per second. A lot of you are actually pretty familiar with the kilojoule, although in the United States we don't call it the kilojoule, we usually refer to it as a calorie. Okay. So let's take our uh, idea here of the first law of thermodynamics, that energy is not created or destroyed, it can only be converted. So if we take our one meter squared, let's say that this one meter squared has an energy equal to, or it has absorbed about 2,000 kilojoules of energy. Now in those 2,000 kilojoules, let's say that this cow eats all of this, so all of this gets eaten by that cow. So he's gonna eat one square meter of that energy. Now, this cow is gonna do a few things with that energy. First, he's going to um, use it mechanically. So mechanically, he might do things like move, he might walk, he might chew, all that muscle movement is gonna be mechanical energy. Also, his body is going to give off heat, and uh, he might occasionally moo or make a sound. And also, he is going to add body fat, which we could call potential energy. In an environmental standpoint, um, about 90% of the energy, okay, so in this case, about 90% of this energy, or 18 100 kilojoules is going to be used up by this cow in his daily actions or in her daily actions. The potential energy, the amount being stored, is only going to be about 10% of that cow's energy or uh, what gets added on in this case of that 2,000 is 200 kilojoules from the original. So you can see here we still have the total of 2,000 kilojoules which is basically the law of conservation of energy, that if the grass had 2,000 kilojoules, then the cow is going to somehow use that 2,000 kilojoules 
in different ways, if it's with muscles, if it's with heating, sound, or the potential energy of adding fat onto its body. Okay? So that's the basics of the first law of conservation of energy. The second law of, ther of thermodynamics is that energy is always lost in a system into a less useful form. Uh, this is typically what scientists would call entropy, is the idea that something is becoming more disordered and entropy increases as energy is used. So a real simple example, and we'll come to this one uh, many, many times in the future for uh, class. Let's say we have a, uh, a forest here of pine trees. And within this forest of pine trees, let's say there was a forest fire, okay? So there's a giant forest fire with these pine trees. Let's make that fire. Okay, so there's a giant forest fire. And in the forest fire, the idea is that entropy happens or that um, the energy is becoming less useful. So if we have uh, these long chains of cellulose that make up the tree. So let's just draw some random things here. So we have the cellulose that makes up a tree. And if it catches on fire, we're going to be adding oxygen to that. And what happens is, in the case of this fire, we have the resulting things like heat come off in the fire. There's a lot of light when fires are being made. There's a lot of sound when fires are being made. A lot of energy is given off in general, right? So in the end of this, we often have this mix of carbon dioxide gases that are flying around in the air. Uh, you might have some resulting H2O molecules that are also going to be going around. Um, oddly enough, they look similar to CO2. And um, you might have this pile of carbon left over. But basically, uh, all of this that's left over is a lot less organized than what we have here. The organization uh, becomes a lot less useful. So here we had a high potential energy. And here we have a lower potential energy. Basically what that means is, oops, energy. Uh, basically what that means is that in the form of wood, the, the wood that we started with had a lot of energy stored up in it, but after the forest fire, the remaining products are a lot less energy potential. So basically over the course of this, res of this chemical reaction, we have what we would call an increase of entropy and the increase of entropy is that there's more disorder among these molecules than there was in this first example. Okay, so um, thermodynamics, like I said, can be pretty challenging, but hopefully these two examples can help break them down and make them a little more easy to understand. I encourage you to go back and watch again or rewind any parts that you need to double check on. Hope you learned something new today.